Okay, so in the last, I would say, five to ten years, we have been bombarded with apoc apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic type movies and television shows. Now, I've talked about this with the Illuminati. Nobody said to the powers that be, you know what, let's, we want more Illuminati. We want, in fact, nobody knew about the Illuminati. <laughs> So all this Illuminati symbolism isn't being generated from a public demand. This isn't a supply and demand type thing. They created the market. They created this brand, this Illuminati brand. And you see this now with the apocalypse. Now, I just made a video about how Jose Cuervo Tequila is trying to own the apocalypse. They have this tomorrow is overrated ad campaign. You know, they want to get that apocalyptic dollar. And so... This is something that is coming from what I like to call the controller. So if you saw like before, there would be one apocalyptic movie, disaster movies, things like this. It would be one, you know, a year, whatever it might be. I mean, sometimes you wouldn't see anything like this for years and years. And now you're seeing it's on a regular basis, so much so that they're using it as ad campaign and branding. And so I wanted to, not just the apocalypse, but all of this stuff, the world turning in a dark and nefarious way. And so I just wanted to highlight a few recent movies or trailers that have been released. I haven't had time to cover them individually, so I want to talk about them here. The main one I want to cover is the Geostorm trailer, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, I want to start with the Belko experiment. Now, this is a trailer in which it's some sort of a horror film and there's people in an office building and they have to kill each other. The building is sealed off, the people can't leave and they're told if they don't kill each other, if they don't kill 30 people in the next hour, they're going to kill 60 people. And so there's this experiment for whatever God knows reason. There's absolutely, this thing is totally pointless, you know. As an experiment, this is totally pointless. Why would they want to spend all this money when they could just call people to understand this? So it's just some ridiculous premise for the movie. But as a psychological operation for people, it's getting them to get into this frenzied state that they have to kill their brothers and sisters. They have to kill their work, people in their environment to survive. And people are going to be fighting over a meager amount of resources in the future. And so to get this idea out there that you're going to die unless you kill the people around you is something that they want to put out there. And in the, in the logo itself, the Belko Experiment logo is this giant, you know, this Illuminati eye. Another movie was this Cure for Wellness. Another trailer that's come out is for this Cure for Wellness. I think the movie's come out really creepy, filled with Illuminati imagery and symbolism. And just the title itself, A Cure for Wellness. If you think about our society, our society is a cure for wellness. It's making us all sick. Of all the movies, this one is the creepiest and most disturbing. It looks like the creepiest and most disturbing. Another movie I saw, another trailer just came out, is called The Thinning. And this is in the future, the not-too-distant future, where children are being thinned out. There's depopulation based on their abilities in school. So there's this high level of competition and if they don't make the grade, if they don't test well, then they get thinned out. So you think about it, what are they putting out there? <laughs> I mean, and this is a very realistic possibility because there is going to be a depopulation. There's a depopulation agenda now, and it's just how they're going to evaluate who gets to live and who doesn't. And you're going to see this developing more and more in the near future. It's something where... Once there are real shortages where they can sell it to people and say, you know, we have to find a way to reduce the human population, there's going to be shortages in the near, very near future when people start seeing this. Of course, there are shortages. It's just not hitting people in America yet. But there are shortages worldwide. People are starving on a worldwide basis. And so when it starts hitting the so-called developed world, you're going to see world leaders talking about depopulation and I'm going to get into why these all these movies are important and why we're being bombarded about them in just a second. So the next piece is this movie Geostorm and it's about how there is weather modification in the near future. They say this, the technology that controls our weather 
Well, it starts off by saying in the future, and then it says the technology that controls our weather. But it's not really in the future, because if you look at the way the people are dressed and the kind of cars they're driving, it looks like right now. And there is either a weather war or the system has gone rogue. And there is all of these calamities. There's multiple tornadoes and they show all this worldwide calamities because of this weather war. Now we already know that there's weather, weather modification systems that has been well documented in the truth community. And of course they're gonna to try to control the weather. They say whoever controls the weather controls the world. But if you think about this, now, there are a couple of reasons why they're putting out all of these trailers and these types of things. Now, it isn't because they want to prepare us. <laughs> it's not because they are preparing us, but in a way they have to. I've talked about this before. People say, well, why do they tell about their plans? Because they have to. You can see they have to, in some way, tell exactly what they're doing. There has to be an admission for various reasons. It's just part of the rules. There's a couple of other things that are beneficial for them. In this case, they want to prepare us to fear the apocalypse, to make it into some horrific event. Because in a, in a sense, it isn't an apocalypse at all. It's just a period where we're changing. One, one, one time is coming to an end, and a new time is beginning. And there are times in your life that you have it. You can say you have had personal apocalypses where your old life just died and your new life begins. And it's a transitionary period, and we all have them, and we're going to have one collectively in the near future. And it's going to be a lot, it's going to be intense, because that's what's going to happen. We can see the intensity. But it's something that we can manage. Some of us will thrive. Some people will thrive in a post-apocalyptic world. And so there's no reason to say it's necessarily a horror film. It isn't going to be a horror film for everybody. The people that die, maybe, that's going to, it's going to be a horrific event for them. But death in itself isn't a, isn't a hor horrific event because you're just leaving this world and going to another world, hopefully a better place. And the other benefit for them in doing these types of movies and in, in using people's collective consciousness to bring about something. I've talked about this before. When everybody's mind, because we all have the ability to manifest reality, and you now have a large number of people, including large numbers of the sheeple type people who believe and kind of have a sense that there's going to be an apocalyptic type situation, that the system's going to collapse. And everybody's meditating on that. Everybody's manifesting that by planting the seed, by putting these ideas out there, you're creating this world. We are collectively manifesting this. And this has, this is part of the reason that human beings have so much power in this world because what we think and we feel and the what we are creating the future right now whatever we're thinking about whatever we're projecting out of our internal worlds is manifesting into a future world and they are trying to control what that future looks like by planting these seeds and having us all direct our mind and our thought force into manifesting the future in a way that they can control it because they know that we're going through a transitionary period. Some of it's natural, some of it's man-made, but there's going to be a collapse of our civilization. That's the next big thing. And it's going to, there's going to be a lot of negative things that go along with it, wars, whatever it might be. And when that, when that collapse manifests, they want to come out on the other side and control it the best way they can, like a controlled burn forest fire. I've talked about that in past videos. And so by directing everybody's thought force in a way that they can control it, and again, they're hoping to have a lot of people die off and have a big die off. And so if they can create so much dread, because you have people that are 100% dependent on the system the way it is now, and if you have them dreading and thinking about this apocalypse, like, oh, there's no way I'll survive that. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not up for that. Then they'll just shut down. People just shut down and give up. And so there'll be this huge culling of the population. And they can move forward in their bunkers and their underground cities and tunnels and things like this. I mean, they think this is how they're going to do it, but it just never is going to go that way. Because there's no way the controlling system is surviving the apocalypse <laughs> and that is something we can all look forward to 
the system the way it is now is built in the Kali Yuga. It's built for this age. It's built for the world we live in now. And it's not going to make it through the... In fact, it is one, it's the major reason why this thing is happening. Because this controlling system and all the negativity and demon worship has to be cleansed from our world. And so the people that are going to make it through to the other side of the post-apocalyptic world when there's going to be a rebirth and a renaissance of spirituality and just this higher level of consciousness after this really difficult time and be humbled and going to have a higher level of consciousness and a deep interconnection with God because that's the only way they're going to survive this. It's going to be, it's going to be a must. You won't be able to survive this period of time without formulating, without cultivating a strong relationship with God in your heart and all these types of things. What I talk about these in so many videos, it's going to be right there for people because it's not going to be something we can deny. The people that survive this apocalypse and the people that the generations that follow will be well aware of humanity's issues, their sins or whatever you want to call it. They're going against nature, all the things that have caused the world to collapse the way it has. We'll all be aware of it. We'll be aware of our past deeds and past lives. And there'll be this sense of we need to redeem ourselves. That's something that everyone will live with on a daily basis. It'll be right there. When they see the suffering of their children, when they, see the, when they feel the suffering themselves, and we see the way that we've messed up the world, then there's going to be this sense, oh, we have to redeem ourselves. And there'll be this just bowing down humbly before God and saying, you know, we want to we want to be a better. We want to be better as a, individuals, as a species, and we'll take inner direction from God and build a world from there. And people who are of a negative quality just won't be able to make the cut. It just won't be available to them. It's like a filter, and they just won't be able to pass through into the future. And so there's a lot of difficulties coming, but it's something that most of us probably already realized we have to pay a price for our misdeeds, our collective misdeeds and our individual misdeeds. I mean, there's just going to be a price and we have to step up. We have to evolve. We have to rise up to a higher level and the vibrations on earth will change in such a way that if you don't resonate with those vibrations, if you're a violent person, if you're a manipulative person, these types of things, you just won't be able to cope. Right now, those vibrations are rewarded. Sociopaths and negative people, it's rewarded, but in the future, you just won't be able to function in that world. It'll just, everything will just come back on you immediately and you just won't be able to live that way. And so we shouldn't assume the apocalypse is going to be a negative thing, whatever you want to call it, this changing time. I mean, I'm going to talk about this more extensively in a future video. For a lot of people, they're just going to flourish. It's people that are having trouble functioning in the world the way it is now are being prepared for the way the world is going to be in the future. That's the idea behind Pockets of the Future. Because there's going to be such a dramatic transformation. You might be struggling right now on a daily basis, but when this the, when this system starts collapsing and you have to adapt, you find that you have all these inner qualities and inner abilities that are coming out, and you've been tailor-made to go through this next phase. And that's a beautiful thing. So I don't think anybody should thread this because you don't even know personally how you're going to react to it. You might be somebody that's just tailor-made to thrive in this post-apocalyptic world and through the apocalypse. All right, so this is Paul Romano reporting from the apocalypse. Everybody have a blessed day.